Machine polishing your car for the first time can be a scary, daunting experience. The aim of this video is to give you a fast, simple, easy to follow method that's not gonna break the bank and get you very good results on your car, particularly if you're doing this for the first time. So let's get stuck into what machine polishing your car is really all about. There are four main steps to this process and the first one is simply washing your car. The channel's done a full video on a safe wash process that you can watch if you're interested. For the purpose of this video though, a highlights reel of some of the important things you might want to consider when washing to prepare for machine polishing. Number one, use powerful cleaning products, whether it's a pre-wash, a contact shampoo or an APC. I recommend the Built Hamber range as well as being powerful cleaners, they are also very cost effective. Number two, make sure you have a good detailing brush as well as a wash mitt. It's very important to pull out dirt from all the crevices and panel gaps prior to machine polishing, as well as just using your wash mitt to make sure you get all of the panels really clean. Step two, decontamination. The word decontamination sounds very impressive when you're first starting, but basically this is an additional cleaning step to remove via chemicals and abrasion forms of dirt and contamination that you cannot get off with the wash mitt or a soft brush. The first thing I'd say with this, if you're trying to get your car detailed and polished in one day, I think you're gonna to need to skip the chemical decontamination and go straight for a clay bar or a clay cloth and get stuck in removing these contaminants from your car. I'd recommend perhaps by default you look at the Built Hamber white light clay bar or the black medium clay bar if you've got a bit more contamination to use. By all means, use whatever clay bar you feel is best for you. I'd also strongly recommend you get yourself some Optimum No Rinse or O&R, which is a rinseless wash product that you can dilute down to a clay loop concentrate, which is extremely effective at reducing clay-induced marring, but also won't break your bank account at the same time because you can make so much of it for so little money. So when you're ready to start playing, guys, just section stuff off in your mind. So like a quarter of your front hood panel, for example, a wing, a door. Those are the sort of areas you want to work at. And then just spray your O&R lubricant over that area. And you can see what I'm doing, guys. As you work a section, um, you will start feeling the contamination when you hit it. You'll also see it on the clay when you inspect it. And your first few sort of sets of claying will give you an idea generally of how contaminated the car is. When you finish a surface or you know you've picked up a load of contamination, fold your clay to give you a nice clean surface for the next pass. You will find there's more contamination on the lower sections of the car, behind each of the um, wheels on the car and on the back section. So try and be consistent and thorough as you clay your way around the car. Next up guys, an optional step. You can choose to mask up any areas of the car that you think might get damaged by the polishing process or there's a risk that polish will get stuck in certain areas and dry. For example, the rubber seals around the doors, the rear emblems, the front badges, any grills, areas like that, headlights. It's a long discussion, another video, but you can use masking tape to help protect the car from the polishing process. So onto the polishing now, guys. I'd recommend that you use a DAS6 Pro Plus style machine with 125 mil or five inch backing plate and also the option of using the smaller 75 to 90 mil plate to support the smaller pads. In terms of our polish or compound choice we're going to be using Show Concepts S20 Black which is a one step compound and in simple terms that means we're just using that one product to deliver us our cut and our finish. And we're going to be pairing this abrasive up with the chemical guys Green Hexlogic mid-range pads. For multiple stage correction, I'd recommend you use Shoal S3 Gold XXL with Chemical Guys yellow or orange cutting pads. And then for finishing, I'd recommend with that combo, you use Shoal Concepts S40 with the Chemical Guys white Hexlogic pads, either Quantums or normal Hexlogic. So we're nearly ready to get going. So first thing we've got to do, guys, is shake the living bejesus out of the polish to make sure we mix it all up properly. Very important. Then we use a fresh pad, we're gonna put four pea-sized blobs of polish on the pad. Then every subsequent set after that, we'll use three. We then dab our product around a two by two section of a panel with the machine off. 
Then with the machine on the slowest setting, we turn it on and we spread those thin footprints of product evenly over our section of panel that we're gonna polish. This is your opportunity to find out if you've used too much product. It should generally be a thin film. When you're ready to start, set the speed dial between four and five on your machine and turn it on. We're then gonna move the machine in a cross hatch pattern, going very slowly and applying just gentle pressure on top, literally the weight of your hand on top of the machine and moving the machine reasonably slowly just to allow it to actually affect and work those abrasives properly. All I'm really focusing on here is making sure I maintain a roughly constant speed and I achieve around 50% overlap with the existing line that I've just polished. There are not really too many other things to manage, guys. These machines are not prone to stalling. You'll see them slow down a little bit when you go over raised edges or you put too much pressure on one area of the, of the pad when it's not level. The product or compound we're using is very oily, so you won't get much dusting from that. So really, you're just gonna be keeping that machine level and working a slightly kind of robotic, consistent method. One really useful tip is try and keep your back straight, even straighter than I'm doing now. If you've got a bent back, you will feel it very, very rapidly. So once you finish your first pass of going like up and down in lines with 50% overlap, you're gonna then change directions and go left and right with the same overlap. And once you've done one up and down pass and one left and right pass, that is like a full sweep. And after three or four full sweeps, you are really ready to stop polishing on this particular machine. There's no exact time frames, but really if you're polishing any longer than three to four minutes, the cut is gonna have gone away on this product and you're perhaps um, not really working efficiently at that point. And here you can see just navigating a little section of the bonnet that's perhaps a little bit more awkward. Um, there's lots of difficult areas to polish on cars and there's lots of hard areas. Most times you see a demo of polishing, it'll be on the nice, easy hood area. And um, you'll very rarely see people demoing polishing on uh, very intricate, awkward areas to hit and polish. We'll do some more demos on that later on in the channel, but this is really just to sort of show you and get you started. But you can see here, I'm working along kind of like a um, angled part of the um, bonnet, which is a little bit more difficult to uh, polish. And I'm just sort of letting the machine kind of spin over that area. I'm not trying to put any pressure on that raised edge, although it's not a really heavy edge. And I'm not working with aggressive kind of rotary polisher with pressure and speed where I'm really overly worried about burn through and stuff like that. So this, the, the benefit of this particular machine and this particular method here is that it's very safe, but it's a relatively slow way to kind of cut back clear coat. But that's really good when you're first starting. So this machine is very easy to control, guys. I'm just demoing it here, messing around, holding it with one hand. There isn't much skill to operate in this machine. You're just trying to keep it level and working it over the panel. So I wanted to show you a full horizontal and then vertical pass so you can see for yourself in real time what that looks like and then get in your head kind of, if you repeat that three to four times over a time period of roughly three to four minutes, like I said before, then that is your polishing set. And after that third or fourth pass, you then stop the machine and then we're gonna show you what to do next. And here you can simply see the leftover polish residue, which is still loose, oily, and hasn't dried out. To remove the polish residue, I recommend the Interdetailing 350 Yellow Edgeless Plush Buffing Cloths. These cloths are incredibly soft and absorbent. You just work them with a four-way fold in gentle circles, picking up 99% of that spent product first. If you then want to inspect your work more closely, you can do a quick further IPA and water wipe down using a clean side of the microfiber cloth. After each set of polishing guys, it's really important to clean out your pad. Make sure the surface of the pad, you can see all the little kind of holes rather than it getting kind of caked up with um, spent polish. So simply set the machine to a sensible level, use the soft 
bristle toothbrush, fire the machine up and just stroke the pad reasonably gently and you'll see that product start to come out of the pad. After the IPA wipe down, you're ready to go and inspect your work. Budget isn't an option, you can go for an elite mode, Sealy workshop inspection torch, or even a very cheap pocket LED torch I'm, I'm showing you here. So on the right side of the black line, we had the corrected polished paintwork. On the left side, we have the uncorrected paintwork. And with our inspection torch, we can get a good view of what this paintwork really looks like. Have we achieved perfection with one set of single stage polishing? No, we haven't. And if we look around this little section, look, we can see a little scratch there below the light source. Um, and that's quite a long scratch. And that can all come out. You're just going to need another set of working. But if we carry on kind of looking around this panel, we'll probably find other scratches and defects if we look hard enough. There's one there that's, you know, reasonably deep scratch that the polishing hasn't removed. So these, this is the reality of polishing, guys. You do not go in with a single stage and achieve perfection, which we're going to talk about in a second. But it also gives you a rough idea of what to expect because this is reasonably hard BMW paint. And if we go over the um, marker line that I put there, we can see what the paintwork looked like before we did the polishing. So we've achieved a good improvement, but not perfection. Over the last three to four years, I have fielded thousands of questions from guys that are machine polishing for the first time. The overwhelming thing or question that I get asked about this from people that have taken the plunge is, John, I followed your method. I'm using exactly the same products, the Green Pad, the Shoal S20, the DAS 6 Pro Plus. I've done my set of polishing. I buff down and there's still swell marks there. And I reply back to them and say, good, that's completely normal. Um, that is expected. You're not gonna go in with a one stage abrasive on heavily swelled paint with you know, the least aggressive type of machine polisher, the DAS 6 kind of pro dual action polisher and instantly make flawless paint. So that's the one thing I want you to take away if you're doing for this for, for the first time, expectation. You can, Drive towards perfection, guys, by doing set after set. When you make the decision you're gonna do more than one set, then immediately the one step, one stage, one hit polishing approach is obviously not gonna give you the best results. It's a starting point. The biggest thing with it is, is a massive time saving without having to invest in multiple pads and multiple compounds. So if you're using a heavy cutting compound with a finishing polish, you double the amount of you've got to spend on product and you've also got to spend on pads to support those. Um, so of course there are gonna be limitations, but the benefits are that it's realistic that you can actually polish your car in one day and you can still take it to whatever level you want to with this particular approach. It just might take you a little bit longer if you're gonna do multiple sets. And if you're doing beyond two sets, it becomes very unviable, really, where you should be using heavier compounds and finishing polishes, because it's more efficient and you'll get better results, but it's gonna take you more time and it's gonna cost you a lot more money. That is it, guys. If you have any questions about machine polishing, please put them as comments in this video. Also, if you like the video and the advice you're getting on the channel, please subscribe to the channel and also check out our Patreon page if you wanna support the channel. That would be very much appreciated. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you haven't taken the plunge into machine polishing your car, it unlocks a massive amount of what detailing is all about. There is nothing to be scared of. Take your time and enjoy it. And if you've got any questions, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you very much for watching. This is John from the Forensics Detailing Channel. Bye for now. Where was I when you went home?